Welcome back to Start Your Day. Dr. Debbie Turner Bell crowned Miss America in 1990. And among the other crowns she wears, veterinarian, award-winning broadcast journalist, motivational speaker, and now she's an author too. She opens up in her new memoir, Courageous Faith, A Lifelong Pursuit of Faith Over Fear. Uh, we all need to read this book, right? It is an inspirational, vulnerable, self-guide help book. It's about persevering in the face of adversity. Here she is, Miss America. I hope we don't have to pay for that because sometimes you have to pay. We have to get a, you know, mm -hmm. copyright. Pay a fine or something for that. Mm -hmm. Right, a copyright. That's what it is. <laughs> Welcome, Dr. Turner <laughs> Bell. And uh, we were joking in the break, but you still look like the crown could be atop your head. I mean, you haven't aged at all. You're beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. So thank you for starting your day with us. And congrats on the new Thanks. book. I don't know how you have the time. Um, how did you do it, though? You've heard this question, right, countless times before. After being crowned Miss America 1990, how did the little girl from Arkansas win mm. that title? Hi, Sharon. Good morning to you. And hello, Shannon, my good hey. friend. Hey. It's great to see you. Thank you for having me on. Uh, and to answer your question in very short terms, it was purely by the grace of God. I am what I am, wow. I have what I've had, and uh, I have been where I've been because of the grace, favor, and the goodness of God on my life. And so to God be wow. all the glory mm -hmm. for what he's done, and mm -hmm. I, I make no bones about that. All right, she preaching up here. And you know what, Debbie? Yes, she is. <laughs> and we've known each other for years, and I'm learning new stuff mm -hmm. about you in this book, and you really take readers there. I mean, you talk about everything mm -hmm. from miscarriages mm -hmm. to death threats mm -hmm. on your life. So what gave mm -hmm. you the courageous faith to be so vulnerable and transparent? Well, I wanted people to understand that first of all, we all in this human experience go through difficulties, go through setbacks and disappointments. And the difference between achieving success and the reason that we were placed on this earth and not is that courage to get up after you've been knocked down. And so I yeah. opened the book with the story of the lowest point for me during my pageant experience. It was after I lost the Miss Arkansas pageant for the third time and I was laying in a fetal position wow. crying in my hotel room saying God I don't understand many thought that I was robbed that I should have won that night uh, I thought I was going to win and it just didn't happen and as I laid there crying uh, as hard as I'd ever cried up to that point in my life mm. saying God this is not fair um, I heard a voice in my heart and I know this can be con controversial for some people but I believe a great big God who can create a universe mm -hmm. can speak to his creation and I heard in my heart yeah. Debbie I'm faithful now get up mm. and so wow. I got up and washed off the makeup and I didn't know what was gonna happen next I didn't know if I'd ever become Miss America but I knew that God was good I knew that he was immutable and unchanging and I trusted him to direct my footsteps and so that's really the heart of this book is that if we will believe that um, we can persevere, we can overcome adversity, we can use failure as building blocks towards success, uh, then we'll see that happen. And, and that doesn't mean that life is all great. And I share mm -hmm. too much information about the many ways that life has not been great for me, yeah. but I'm living proof that yeah. dreams can come true, that God is good, and that you can overcome your difficulties if you have the courageous faith to get up. Thanks, yeah. Sharon. She's you know, trying to get you, us to cry and shout all at the yeah, same she time. Is. I mean, <laughs> John fell out. All that. And you know, you, you're such a beautiful package, right? Mm. What we see, there's people who haven't yet read the book. Again, I encourage everyone to buy it and read it and save it and go back to it. Mm. But you, you're such a, a wonderful you. exterior, right? Wasn't it important for you to share? those losses too, not just that you were winning, winning, winning for those who think that's all there is to it, but not everybody's going to hear yeah. that little voice that you heard that night, Debbie. Mm. Not everybody's going to hear someone say, get up, faith. So how do you encourage people that they too can activate their faith? Well, first of all, thank you for the compliment. I like to say a little makeup goes a long way, honey. Um, but, uh, that's part of the reason why I wanted to write the book because very often, especially in this age of social media and mass media, reality television, we often mm -hmm. see the finished product. 
we don't see the sacrifice. We don't see the struggles. And we see these people achieve these big, great things with riches and fame and influence and all these things. And so many people think that if their life doesn't look like it looks on social media, that they somehow are flawed or that it's somehow not in the cards mm -hmm. for them. So part of the reason I wanted to sort of peel back the layer of makeup and brush through the layer of hairspray is to show people, mm -hmm. listen, we all go through difficulty. I know when I have hard times, what's encouraging to me is to know that I'm not alone in it, that somebody else has not only experienced it, but survived it. So I'm hoping that my life and uh, some of the many difficulties that I've been through will serve as an inspiration to the reader that they're not alone in their difficulties mm -hmm. and that someone else survived it and lived to tell the tale and that you can survive it and live to tell the tale as well. Now, Debbie, we only have about one minute left, but I want to go through a few of your empowering guide steps because you have 10 factors in the book that you lead the reader through on life lessons you've learned along your journey. So can you ch share maybe just mm -hmm. three of those with us? Sure, I'd be happy to. I want people to know that, first of all, that you learn how to live by redefining what success is. Success sometimes is just surviving minute by minute. Don't always have such a long view. Eat the elephant one bite at a time. Next, the key to your well-being and future success is how you overcome it. Uh, I love to say that success is built on a foundation of failures. That means you try, you fail, you learn, and you try again. And then finally, allow life's challenges to develop patience in you. Man, we live in this instant gratification microwave society that we want uh, rewards yes. right away. But the truth is, most things worth having take time and take mm -hmm. sacrifice. And the sooner we accept that and learn to just take it one step at a time, the happier our lives will be, the more fulfilled we'll be, the more peace we'll live in, uh, and the more likely mm -hmm. we are to make it to those goals. You have inspired did I get, did and, I do it and in a really minute? settled us this morning. Uh, it yeah. feels so good, and I feel bad asking this, but I, I hope you don't hold it against me, but you brought it up. You brought up the hairspray, and when mm. I saw that gorgeous picture of you with the crown, how much hairspray did it take to hold that <laughs> in just perfect place? I know we're not supposed to be shallow so, after what you just laid on us, but yeah. <laughs> So Look let me just that. say that if anybody had uh, lit a match within five feet of, feet of me, I would have gone up like <laughs> oh a Roman gosh. candle. See, well, that that <laughs> answers goodness. that question. No smoking, then. right? And no, Debbie, no ma'am. I was just texting my wife, Chandra, and I was like, I've never seen Debbie's crown. Where is your crown? Do you still have yeah. it? Uh, well, yeah, I do have it. It's on a shelf in my closet. <laughs> in the closet. <laughs> So you know you accomplished when you can keep your crown yeah, in the closet. That's like, true. ah, that, that's that was dusty. just the beginning. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, what I love to tell people is you go for your crown, whatever that is. If mm. it's a degree, uh, a it. state of happiness, a child, a marriage, a, uh, uh, a career, you go for your crown. Mm. And my crown is proof you can get your crown. All right. Well, I'm going to go so after my crown, too. Our guys Love can you. go after theirs, yeah. too. Debbie, Dr. That's Debbie right. Turner-Bell, thank you so much for starting your day with us. We all need to go out and get that book, Courageous Faith.